Sony's already updating the PlayStation 5. We have some Intel GPU stuff to talk about, as well as the fact that miners might be uh, taking over all of the production facilities that are out there. Let's get into the hot news, my friends. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet so you can get back to your day and starting off with the top story about Sony's upcoming refresh of the PlayStation 5 with six nanometer AMD CPUs. This is according to a DigiTimes report that's saying next year, Sony should refresh the PlayStation 5 in order to take advantage of 6 nanometer technology, which will allow for up to 18% higher transistor density compared to the current node that it's on, which can reduce the size of the die and also reduce costs so that Sony can make this more profitable. And because this is just a node shrink and not them moving on to something like 5 nanometers, we're not expecting that this is going to be anything like a PlayStation 5 Pro. But one of the key questions that comes up here is whether or not Sony is going to redesign the outer chassis especially if you can reduce the die size, you're likely also gonna reduce the thermal output, which means that you don't need as beefy of cooling. So we might be expecting something like a PlayStation 5 Slim next year, or Sony could do what they did with the PlayStation 4 in the past, which is just iterate and iterate and iterate, and they get quieter and quieter and cooler as the generations progress. But it's interesting to hear that this is coming out around Sony's development of the PlayStation 5, especially since AMD hasn't been confirmed to use six nanometers at all in the upcoming stuff we're expecting from them is supposed to be on five nanometers as well as the fact that there's no indication that Xbox might be doing something like this die shrink in the near future but this might be necessary for Sony because they are packing in a lot more expensive equipment into their PlayStation 5 especially with the SSD and their IO controller that reducing costs might be vital to their business but we're going to talk a little bit more about Microsoft and their console business when we get to Epic versus Apple day four now I know we're all wondering whether or not the PlayStation five will ever come in stock for you to buy these in the first place but the good news is that while you're waiting you can now have youtube tv on your playstation 5. it's the most important news of the day especially since youtube tv is no longer on roku so they're mending your broken hearts and let's mend your broken hearts with today's episode sponsor my friends i'm excited to have today's episode sponsor of hot news dot tech domains they always have innovative campaigns that they come to us with and today is no different. Did you know that in the US, only 47% of public high schools offer computer science classes? Access to computer science and tech education is a major challenge for young women and students from marginalized communities today. And our sponsor of Hot News Today, Dot Tech Domains, along with GoDaddy Pro, are giving away not 10%, not 50%, but 100% of their sales proceeds to code.org to change this. This is something that's really important to me. The fact that I had computer science classes in high school allowed me to to launch into the career that I have today. And I was able to have relevant conversations about how tech was gonna impact my life. Tech's something that I've always had a passion for from the time I got my Windows 3.11 PC when I turned five for Christmas, to up to just building my first gaming PC in high school, but also having mentors along the way, such as my computer science teacher in high school, who helped us to have relevant conversations around technology and things that are relevant now, such as podcasts or body cameras. Those were conversations I was having over 15 years ago in my high school classroom because I had somebody who cared about technology and how it's going to play into our life. I'm grateful for my start in tech and I'm happy to have Dot Tech Domains partnering with us today to help get other people to have their start in tech. So if you go to go.tech forward slash hot news, you can pick up a Dot Tech Domain from then. And again, 100% of the sales proceeds are going to code.org to help bring computer science access to the people who need it most. Staying on the AMD side of the train tracks, let's talk about PowerColor's RX 6700 XT Hellhound and it's the perfect white GPU that was ever released. Galax with their Hall of Fame cards are getting close, but then they started adding in LCD screens, got really fancy and complicated with it. Power Color coming out with something that is sleek, minimal, simple, clear fan blades, which is absolutely what you want. The only downside that I can see here are stuff like the switch is black, as well as the PCI Express power connectors. But overall, this is a very good thing, especially with the PCB being white. We finally have another company that's making it all white GPU. You guys better buy it to show that Power Color should make this. They should continue to make this and show every other manufacturer that if they're going to have a white card, the PCB needs to be white. And the last AMD update is that it's been reported that Dr. Lisa Su is going to keynote Computex for the third year in a row. But now let's get into Intel because we got some Alder Lake leaks that are coming out, especially around the 1800 Alder Lake engineering sample, which now has been shown to have 16 cores and 24 threads. This very 
varies from how it's typically done since the threads usually double the core count. But since we're expecting Alder Lake to actually have a big little architecture, as you can see here with big CPU and smaller CPUs, not all of them are going to be hyper threaded. So with this having 50% more threads instead of 100% more threads, this is gonna be an interesting chip to work with. I'm not sure what I'm expecting out of this, especially with the launch of new architectures like this. It introduces a whole host of issues that can come into just interfacing with the operating system. If you remember Ryzen's launch from AMD, it took a while for that to get worked out with microcode updates and Windows updates in order to get them to mesh together. So Alder Lake's gonna be a huge departure from what we have from Intel right now. And Intel wants to continue to tease us with their upcoming GPU. Raja Kadori teasing out some Ponte Vecchio eye candy on his Twitter page, as well as there was an announcement that the Intel DG2 gaming GPU is right around the corner. Whatever that means, nobody has any indication what that's talking about. There's a tweet that came out that Intel is looking for a senior game developer relations engineer, and especially since DG2 is right around the corner, it's about to get exciting. We'll just have to hold our breath on that. But Ponte Vecchio, the GPU that Raja Kadori showed off, is actually now going to be in a supercomputer in partnership with Lenovo. It's been announced that Intel is gonna have their Sapphire Rapid CPUs in combination with the Ponte Vecchio GPUs be in a giant supercomputer, which they better use to mine Bitcoin. Let's talk about the GameStop Bitcoin Ethereum Dogecoin update. GameStop, there's nothing to talk about. It did the same thing it did. it's been doing. Dogecoin down, 3.7%. Down dog, down. Ethereum, also down. Bitcoin, also down. Seeing red in the crypto market, it's blood everywhere. Everybody's getting out. I've heard it's the cool thing to sell your crypto at a loss. But the people who aren't selling their crypto at a loss are the people who are actually mining ahead of everybody else. It's now been announced that TSMC and Bitmain are partnering up to produce Bitmain's latest ASIC miners that are coming out on the five nanometer process, which means that they'll be more power efficient which and faster, which means that they're gonna be more profitable and that should hopefully alleviate some of the GPU stuff. But in case they place more orders than the GPU people like AMD, Bitmain might have priority on stuff. And then it's, so it's like you, you can only buy miners you can't even buy GPUs anymore. Not because all the miners are buying GPUs, but because all the miners replace GPUs. Is that how you want life to be? Well, Google wants life to be more secure. So they're forcing two-factor authentication on eligible accounts with Gmail. They're saying that this is to promote security because you should have it if you can have it so that your account is more secure. And IBM's forcing some node updates on us. They have created the world's first two nanometer chip. You can see here in that picture, that is a heckin' wafer. The quoted transistor density for this chip is 333 million transistors. To put that in comparison with TSMC, who makes AMD and Apple stuff, Apple's five nanometers is about half that at 171 million transistors per square millimeter. And then the three nanometer process, which isn't even out yet, is only supposed to be 292. So IBM revealing something that's a little bit further advanced than what TSMC has right now. And there's nothing else going on right now besides Epic versus Apple, day four. <laughs> It was revealed in the court documents going on between Apple and Epic Games that Apple did not want Netflix to pull its in-app payments because they were gonna lose a lot of money. So they tried to woo Netflix into keeping it and Netflix was just like, but you're taking so much money from us that we can just do it elsewhere and we can save money. And according to the report, Netflix was seeing that people who purchased through the iOS app had a higher abandonment rate on Netflix or a recurring subscription. So they were not only giving a cut to Apple, but they were losing more customers than people who signed up through the web browser. So they decided, hey, we're off with you. But Apple didn't like that because they wanted their money. And Microsoft wants you to know they're still making money. A Microsoft executive got asked during the court case, does Microsoft ever earn a profit on the sale of an Xbox console? To which they replied, no, they don't make any money on consoles, nor have they ever made money on consoles, according to at least the brief report that's here. But saying the gaming business is a profitable and high growth business for Microsoft. So just know that they're making money, but only with the consoles being loss leaders to all of the game subscriptions and the services that you buy with Xbox Live and Xbox Gold and Xbox Game Pass. You gotta buy all the things from Microsoft to make money. But that was one of the key contentions during this court case, especially with regards to the fact that if Apple is found 
to be in violation of whatever antitrust suit that's going on from Epic Games for them taking a 30% cut, then Apple's lawyers argue, well, then that opens up an antitrust lawsuit for any game stores on consoles because they're doing roughly the exact same thing. To which Microsoft said, nay, this is a difference between general use devices and specific use devices, okay? An iPhone, that's a general use device. You can use it for millions of different things and it has billions of different apps for a console as a single use. You wanna play video games. So we gotta tightly control it and we gotta take a cut because we gotta make sure that everything's fine, okay? So don't be dragging us into this. This is, this is between you guys. And let me just remind you that this entire Apple versus Epic saga is going down because Apple pulled Fortnite from the App Store because Epic Games was trying to get people to not pay the Apple amount for the, 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 the V-Bucks that are in the game. But now there's an in-development workaround to get Fortnite back on iOS through GeForce Now because they're working on a touchscreen client for Fortnite so that you can stream Fortnite from an NVIDIA gaming PC all the way to your phone and play it over the cloud that way. So you have multiple different options going on right there and you just play it on your iPhone. Bam, Fortnite back on Apple devices. Why are we even having lawsuits in the first place? And why are we even staying on the earth in the first place? I don't know, Elon Musk doesn't know either. He's trying to get us to go away. And the Starship SN15 prototype is the next key stage in that. And it finally landed on its feet. The SN15 Starship prototype went up went down and it actually landed with Elon Musk tweeting out Starship landing nominal. It stayed there. There was a small fire. It wasn't a big deal, but okay, we're landing rockets now, people. And Google wants you to do that at home, okay? They're saying that they expect most of their staff to spend about three days per week in the office and 20% will be working from new office locations. With the CEO of Google saying the future of work at Google is flexibility. The majority of our employees still want to be on campus some of the time, yet many would also enjoy the flexibility of working from home a couple days a week. Good to see that they're embracing this post pandemic and you should be embracing TikTok. I think, I don't know, this is not an endorsement. I'm just talking about the fact that TikTok is working with Streamlabs to make it so that you can easily tip and use all of the Streamlab features on TikTok live streams. So now TikTok is being integrated into the Streamlabs OBS app. And so you could stream that way with Streamlabs. And you can stream another episode of Hot News by checking out the one we talked about yesterday with RDNA 3 being rumored to have three times as much performance as the current 6900 XT. It's a good one. Go watch that episode of Hot News right there, my friends, and I'll see you on Monday.